They've got a great chance. I think this is the best chance they've had um, in Manchester City's history while I've been watching them in recent history. Um, defensively, look exceptional. 16 clean sheets already in the Premier League. Um, and I think that was always a little bit of an Achilles heel. Even though they were so good going forward and expansive defensively, they've always been question marks over Manchester City. Not just while Pep's been, but previous managers. And I think that's been sorted out. You know, the, the, the signing of Diaz, the re-emergence of John Stones in his form, um, not just in his own box, but also scoring goals in the opposition's box. I think they've just got a real good balance about the team, about the squad. You look at the goal scorers this season and there's no one really outstanding. You've got Gundogan, who's on 15, Sterling, 13, 12. There's goals spread throughout the teams and I just mm. feel, for whatever reason, um, by design, by a little bit accidental because of the, the, the pan pandemic that we're in, yeah. I feel Pep's found um, a solution to getting through games, to rotating the squad. Everyone looks match fit. And um, yeah, I think they're, they're, they're favourites anyway, but I just feel the way they're playing and you know dismantling very good teams and making them look very ordinary, um, it, it's got to be on. But they won't want to talk about that because they're, like Pep says, concentrating on the next game. That's yeah. the most important yeah. thing. Don't get ahead of yourself. But, yeah, but Trevor... looking, they're looking really strong. I'll quote uh, Carlo Ancelotti, who's been in the game for a long time as a player and a manager. And he said, there's nothing new in football. And that is true to a certain extent. But I just feel the positional play of some of the Manchester City players and what their jobs are and what their roles are in the team, it's redefining what roles are in, in teams within a structured structured um, formation. And, you know, you look at Cancelo as he's been coming in as a number four. Mm. And they've gone from a four to a three, just in a pattern of play. Um, which confuses the opposition. I think um, John Stone's stepping in and either Rodri or uh, Fernandinho going into that defence. That's more traditional. But I just feel that last night they played like a 4-4-2 a with a diamond. And for me, the two forwards were the two wingers because Bernard, Bernardo wasn't a forward. He was kind of rotating in that midfield area, whereas the right winger and the left winger stayed high. So it was a 4-4-2, right. but as I've not seen... So he's kind of re-educating me. You know, as a footballer, I've been in the game a long time. I know a lot about formations and shape. I've been coaching for over 10 years. And for me, he is redefining it. You look at the goalkeeper, Edison, when he came in, yeah, play out the back. But the way they play out the back, you know, we talk about clinical finishers in front of goal. Manchester City, when they win the ball back, they're clinical with their possession. Yeah, yeah. And, and for me, if you're, I was looking at that game last night and I was thinking, mm. if you're in that Gladbach team, mm. one, they're passing you to death. The frustration that yes. must have gone throughout that side. Yeah. And like, you, you must have been fuming. But not only that, <laughs> when you do win the ball back, they're like a, they're like a school of piranhas. They're they, they nibble away, yeah. nibble yeah. away. And the intensity, yeah. I think some people miss out on that, but the intensity to win the ball back yeah. is second to none. And I think, you know, as a team, they're just looking spot on. To evolve that team and adapt that team to play without a striker, but yet still be so successful. Yeah. I think it, you, have to, you have to give kudos to Pep. And, you know, a lot of people said he's a fraud and all this, that and the other when they had a, a bit of a hiccup last year. But I think he's shown his true steel this year and he's shown how he can adapt a team. I agree with even you. Even without having a striker available. I agree with you. And, you know, I have to applaud him for that. What I've heard fans say is that City have bought it. All teams buy success. You know, it's from Blackburn when yeah. we first started with the Premier League all the way up to Manchester City. I don't think Manchester City are spending exceptionally more than any other team. No. I think they've got the best manager in place. I think they've got a, a better business model. You know, they've invested in clubs around the world. I think they've invested in good players. When you look at players, like we're talking about Haaland, Harry Kane, Mbappe, who are they going to sign? They'll go out and they'll sign some random guy that we've not really known that much about and he'll end up being a success. Yeah. That is what Pep does all the time. And actually, when you talk about the recruitment for Manchester City, it has been top draw and and and... and Looking at the centre forward position, it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't go for another striker yet. Sure, and, and sure. And they didn't go for one of these strikers that's been tipped to go to Manchester City. It wouldn't surprise me at all. I know Haaland has been heavily linked to yeah. Manchester City, the links with his dad and the fact that he's been photographed wearing Manchester City tops. But I just feel there's a... Listen, when you're at the top, there's a lot of hatred towards you. There's a lot of jealousy and that's what's happening with Manchester <laughs> Not City. Not half, I mean...